Hello, my name is Luke Wanick, and I work for the Agroforestry and Woodlot Extension Society, a, a small nonprofit uh, based out of Edmonton, Alberta. And right now I'm here in uh, Flagstaff County, and I'm going to be uh, demonstrating how to build a bumblebee house. Uh, so bumblebees uh, in nature would live in old rodent burrows in the hollows of trees, underneath the piles of brush or in, in, in uh, bunch grasses, and so. They're looking for anywhere that's warm and, and, and dry, uh, protected from the elements a bit, and you can mimic that by building a little, a little house for them. Um, and I'm going to be talking about how to do that. It's going to look pretty similar to a birdhouse. Um, and yeah, bumblebees, super important, uh, a native pollinator here in Alberta. There's a, a, a number of different species, 28 different species across the province. And, and there's other native bees around here too, but bumblebees, you know, the biggest and the most beloved, the most recognizable. So. Um, right, so for materials, what I have here today, I have um, uh, to start uh, pieces of plywood that I've cut out to appropriate sizes. And I'm not going to go too much into the dimensions here because everything that you need to know, all the details are provided in this fact sheet that we've created on building and installing bubble bee houses. Um, and it, and it uh, goes through the dimensions of how to cut the plywood and, and all the other steps, steps as well. Um, for, for, for the purposes here, all you need to know is that what I'm creating is, a, is, a, is, a, is essentially a cube, a box, with an interior diameter uh, or of, of 6 inches by 6 inches by 6 inches, interior dimensions. And then an, I'm, I have an overhanging roof as well to help with uh, protection from the elements. Um, right, so to start, uh, when you're building these things, first thing to do is you get your plywood cut to the appropriate sizes and then you, you assemble it without screwing it together to make sure that you're on the right track and you know what you're, uh, what you're doing here. So I'm just going to quickly do that here. Um, so we've, we've cut these plywood ahead of time to the appropriate size and you just have to fiddle with them a bit until you get them so you have a nice box shape here. Um, right, and then you have your overhanging roof on, on top. So I just, I'm just doing this so I'm making sure that I have all the right dimensions and I'm screwing the right pieces of wood into the other right pieces of wood. Um, right, so it looks like I'm good here. Uh, now I'm going to start screwing them together. I'm just using inch and a half uh, screws. Or, uh, these are just drywall screws. Deck screws uh, are also an option that may be a bit more durable. Um, but what I'm going to do is spend a little bit of time uh, just drilling these in. I'm just putting some skids on the bottom here to, um, it just keeps it uh, elevated off the ground if you are putting this on the ground. Um, and uh, so we're going to rest on these skids, let less moisture getting in there in the box. So here is my box that I have so far, uh, with everything except for the lid attached uh, yet, because the lid is going to be uh, a hinged lid, so we don't want to screw it on yet. Um, great. So now I am going to attach uh, the lid uh, by the yeah, hinge. Um, there it is. There's my hinge. Uh, yeah, and placing it so you have a nice overhang around all sides here. I'm going to be putting the hinge on in the back of this box um, like this. All right, so it'll be able to open um, that way. Great. You have a working hinge on the back. Okay. Um, right, next step is to install a latch and eye hole screw, latch and eye hole screw, um, and yeah, just get these from Home Depot or another hardware store, um, and you basically install it, so this is the front of the box, it'll go on the side, um, and so you can install first the, 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 the latch aspect into the overhang here. So you can just, and you do it by hand. We have this here. And then we want to get a, an eye hole screw uh, in here. Oh, there it goes. So, right about there, it's probably where it's good. You want the entrance way hole to be, the, more or less the number of people recommend is 5 eighths of an inch. Um, I think that's around 16 millimeters. Um, yes, yeah, so a 5 and 8, eight of an inch drill bit. Um, there is an option to, uh, you can either install these boxes above ground, like strapped to a tree or a post or resting on the ground, or 
install them below ground, digging into the sod and, and, and partially burying them. And if you install it below ground, you end up uh, drilling uh, a slightly bigger hole because you want to accommodate a pipe that's going to go out of the box and it's going to go, uh, um, it's going to be basically everything is going to be buried by the tip of the pipe. So I have this little piece of PVC pipe here that I've cut and, and if I was going to install this box below ground, I would drill about a three quarter inch hole, so it's a bit bigger because the interior diameter of this pipe is, is five eighths of an inch and that's the diameter that we want. So if it's a below ground box, it's, uh, you, you, you install a pipe and, and then that interior diameter of the pipe is the five eighths of an inch. If it's a, an above ground box, then you just drill straight in with a, a, a five eighths of an inch drill bit um, and make your hole that way. Um, great. So I'm, I've, uh, and generally, I, I'll talk about this, I, I have a presentation to go along with this, talk about that a bit in there, but generally they recommend uh, above ground, uh, more if you live in more forested areas, you've got a lot of trees around or something like that, because in nature, those bumblebees living in forested areas might nest in a hollow of a tree or, or some, some place that's above ground, brambles and, or something like that. Uh, whereas uh, if you live out in the, in the prairie, uh, the, the bumblebees that will live there will typically nest below ground, in old road and rows and stuff. So you try to mimic that by placing the box accordingly. So uh, I live in a more forested area, and so I'm going to choose to install my, my, my box above ground. And for that reason, all I need is this 5 8 uh, drill bit. And I'm going to drill right in the center of, of this uh, box here, with this 5 inch drill bit. Just uh, down and up. You want to make the entrance hole nice and um, easy for bumblebees to get in and out of. Everything. Shit. Out all the sawdust, pick out the shards. Um, right, so we have our, uh, yes, we have our hole here. Um, and now that that's uh, small enough that hopefully most mice won't be able to get into there. That's kind of why it's, it's that small. Um, so only a couple more steps here. We're going to weatherproof our um, our box by adding on this is um, a vapor barrier, and I'm just installing this so it's got a nice kind of apron or, or overhang around. But make sure you're not blocking off the entranceway hole in the front, right? So I'm going to install this. Um, this is just a staple gun to staple in. This is now installed. All you need to do that's, uh, that's left is uh, add in, um, this is a, they call this upholsterer's cotton or cotton felt. It's the stuff that you see old cushions and couches stuffed with. Um, and so it's very soft um, and, and the bumblebees like that because it keeps them warm in the springtime when, when things are still pretty cold out. Um, there's other materials that you can use like, I mean, well, other materials I would say that bumblebees use, in, 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 and that would be things like they, they might find um, thistle down, rodent fur, or something like that. And people have, uh, you have seen them in other uh, man-made materials like uh, uh, wool or insulation fiber. But generally, we recommend using this upholsterer's cotton uh, in our boxes because it's the softest and kind of tears apart really easily. So it won't tangle up with the bee's legs like, like a wool might. So anyways, you get this at upholstery stores. Um, and all I've made is, is kind of a strip like this, and I'm going to fold it in the middle like this so that when I put it into the box, um, it'll have a, a, a bed uh, for, 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 for the, the bees to be in, and then they'll have a, a space uh, in, to, to enter in, in and out of the hole, and then they'll have a blanket on top. So it's kind of folded over like this, and so there's a space in the middle for, for them to get in. Um, great. And so that's all about how to build uh, these, these bumblebee houses. Um, if you're interested in learning about places to install them or, or, or best areas to install them, I recommend just looking at our fact sheet here. Uh, it's got all those details there or, or also uh, listening in on our, um, my presentation that kind of goes along with this um, that also talks about how to provide habitat uh, for, for bumblebees more broadly. And, um, and yeah, other than that, thank you for, for watching uh, and uh, hope your boxes attract many bumblebees. <laughs>